instead of going to the field and say, oh, what's going on in the past 20 hour, 24 hours? Uh, well, uh, we are not the first to do um, use wireless sensor networks, so I'm just going to give you two examples how other people are using those um, tiny devices. Uh, one is uh, called Great Duck Island. So these are um, like sensor networks that help um, biologists who are interested in birds. So in this big island, there are these seabirds. They're really sensitive to human. Um, so we can't just send graduate students to collect data. It's even worse. Uh, so what um, they've done is they uh, designed this uh, small sensor. It's in similar shape as ours. And uh, you enclase them and put into a barrel. Um, the sensor is going to measure the temperature, the light, and um, other um, thing, other parameters that are related to the bird, and then uh, collect all the data um, to the data center so the biologist can analyze them without disturbing the bird. Uh, this is uh, stationary, and then um, Princeton also has a network called ZebraNet. So um, the whole goal is try to understand how the zebra is going to move around. Uh, so they put a collar, uh, like a, a sonar, um, not sonar, um, the, um, what's the word? No. Uh, it's actually um, powered, um, basically it can harvest energy from the sun. So. And um, the uh, collar, the, the sensor can also uh, localize itself. So basically, as the zebras move around, uh, the sensor is going to collect where I have been. And when two, uh, two zebras get closer to each other, they exchange data. So they exchange their past data to each other. And then, um, so this zebra is going to um, tell this zebra. So this zebra is going to tell zebra what I've seen, how many zebras I've encountered, and where they have been. And eventually, um, a researcher is going to go out in the field in a jeep. Everything is moving and chasing the zebra. So if they find the right zebra, and the right zebra are going to um, tell basically the data collecting equipment what's going on for all the zebras. So I remember they told me uh, one of the funny thing is they found out actually uh, there's one zebra like to go to the other group of zebras from time to time. And it turned out it's a male zebra and try to find um, mates in different groups. Uh, well, if without a wireless sensor network, it's actually very hard to do. Now coming back to the, um, the intertidal zone that we're looking at, um, the sensor networks here, they are useful, but they are actually very challenging to build. Not because there's waterproof issue, uh, it's actually because we're dealing with seawaters. So this is actually a picture from Georgetown, South Carolina. Um, this waterproof box inside it, uh, we um, put one sensor. So you can imagine during the high tide, all the sensors, they are actually underwater. The wireless communication does not work underwater. So that's the most unfortunate thing. But um, we actually deal with it. So the goal is we want to measure the muscle body temperature by using sensors that have the same thermal feature as muscle. Uh, so this thing, we can't just throw them into the ocean or put them, but they're not waterproof and they don't have the same thermal feature yet. Um, so we have to put uh, other material like Brian has um, talked about. So now let me tell you a little bit more on um, what's inside um, a sensor, the tiny thing. Um, this tiny thing is actually just like your personal computer. Um, not that powerful, but it has CPU. The, um, uh, your computer also has CPU. Your computer probably running on at maybe two gigahertz frequency, but this thing can only run at megahertz level, much slower. So it's like, um, like breathing. If you breathe faster, you consume more energy. Um, if you breathe slower, let's see if you, you consume less energy. So the whole thing, the sensor um, has to work on batteries. This is also already considered a big battery. Um, in the future, we might want to reduce the battery size just to uh, mimic the size of the real sensor. So uh, you can think about battery as a pitcher of water. You have, that's your budget. And once the um, pitcher of the water is gone, this thing is over. 
So uh, in the processing of doing that, we're thinking of how can we reduce the energy consumption? How can we drink water slower? And this is uh, one component. And the second thing is the radio transceiver. So that thing allows you to um, talk to um, the, the other body wirelessly. Uh, it probably won't fun to put wire between two sensors in the ocean. Uh, well, um, and the the other thing is temperature sensors. Um, so we can actually put uh, more sensors onto this tiny thing. Um, right now we are only looking at temperature sensor, but humidity sensor, light sensor, pressure sensor, as long as the sensor is small enough and can run on battery, we can also put on this thing. And then um, there's another important component is memory, flash memory. It's like your flash drive. Although we can put unlimited um, amount on the uh, sensor, but um, they're useful. We put about um, on the um, kilobyte level uh, just to store um, data. So in case the sensor cannot find bodies to upload data, and especially when the sensor is underwater, they have to have some place to store data. So that's the purpose of this uh, flash memory. Let's see. So that's the architecture. Now let's look at, uh, oh, eventually this tiny thing has to turn into this shape so that we can hide between all the real muscles and secretly collecting data and send it to um, somewhere. 